matter to man, protein to purpose, accident to president, and poo-poo to pawpaw. Welcome to the evolution revolution, my stardust siblings. It's all the rage, you know. Profs at prestigious universities, top-notch high school teachers, and all kinds of scientists the world over insist that evolution is a bona fide fact. But is it? Well, we're going to gander at the biggie and take it on mano a mano. How, you ask? With math. But before I jump into my speedy soliloquy, when I say evolution, I'm talking about mindless and undirected forces arranging already existing atoms over lots of time, eventually and ultimately producing all the life we see around us. Now, back to math and a little bit of chemistry. But don't worry, you don't need to know much to knock down this fallaciously feeble, finicky, and faulty Frankensteinian fable foisted fervently from fanciful figures framing fakery for Faustian fame. No, 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 no. And a uh, here we go. This is a protein the basic building block of life. A protein is made up of a chain of amino acids that bond together in a specific sequence. When it comes to living things though, not just any amino acid will do and not just any sequence will work. First, of the roughly 300 amino acids we know of, only about 20 are useful for life. Second, these amino acids must be arranged in a very rare sequence to form the right kind of protein useful to build a living cell. So, you got the basics, let's do the math. What are the odds that an undirected, mindless process like evolution could produce just one single protein molecule fit for life? Let's keep it simple. The size of a protein with a stable structure called a fold ranges between about 75 and 30,000 amino acids. Let's just take a small number like 150, fair enough? Great, so if each amino acid in the chain of 150 has roughly 20 possible variations, that would mean a life-permitting protein forming by chance would be 20 to the 150th. Now you reduce that down, pass it around, you get 10 to the 195th on the wall. That's a one with 195 zeros after it, just in case you didn't know. But there are other rare sequences that can work and we would have to factor that into the equation, but I'll be honest, I just don't wanna do that. Thankfully, Doug Axe, a molecular biologist, has, and he found that the odds of a relatively short protein to properly function are less than 1 in 10 to the 77th, which is true for a large number of proteins. So that's a 1 with 77 zeros. Now you throw the peptide and the left-handed amino acid problems in there, you get something close to 10 to the 164th. Now, keep in mind that scientists define the occurrence of anything with less than 1 in 10 to the 50th as absurd. But we're way beyond absurd here. Allow me to paint a visual. It would be like traveling the universe in an accidentally manufactured spacecraft, stopping on a whim, then reaching out blindfolded into a sea of 10 to the 80th different colored atoms and retrieving the only red one. All this, mind you, just to get one protein. And you need roughly 300 to form the simplest living cell we know of. But the point is this. You can't get a protein, you can't get a cell, and you can't get a life. That's just, well, life. So deal with it. But at least be honest with me, you wouldn't bet on the next hand after your opponent dealt himself a royal flush, would you? And that's far more likely to happen than our protein problem. So please, don't bet something more precious on an absurdity. And that's all I got for now, but rest assured, this chucklesome notion that blind, undirected processes can produce even a single protein, let alone life, has been, dare I say mathematically anyway, debunked. Adios.